Hey guys, my name is Ismas, and today I want to show you how to animate your particles based on a video clip or an image sequence as you can see in the video. So you're going to need two things. You're going to need a particle system and then a video sequence uh, that you can use to influence uh, the scale or distribution of your particles. So to do this, uh, let's, uh, let's open a new project. Again, we're going to need a particle system. So I'm just going to use this plane as on my emitter. And I'm just going to scale it up at the same, to my the same aspect ratio as uh, my video and uh, set up a new hair system. You can use the emitter system as well, but I find that uh, the hair system is much easier to control as you don't have a lot of forces going on like gravity. Importing our uh, texture or video sequence uh, that is going to help us control uh, the scale or distribution of your of our particle or hair particles. Uh, so go to the, scroll down to the textures and uh, create a new texture. Go into that texture and load in your video. So right now you can see that uh, we don't really see any effect of the video, but uh, if you scroll down in your video settings, you can see we have a new tab called influence and that we can influence the hair length. We don't really need the general time here. And you can see, you can already see that uh, we see the effect of the video over uh, the particle distribution and uh, particle length. I also want to be able to visualize our video in the viewport. So I'm going to add a new texture and they're just importing other video as well. If we preview this, you can see the length of the particles is, is dependent on the contrast of uh, the pixels. And I can see white areas spawn high length and uh, dark areas spawn lower length. Uh, but if you play back, you, you don't really see the animation come through in the, uh, in the video and also in the particle system. So to have this come through, you need to make sure that uh, the number of frames you have set here match the video frame. So I think mine was about 250 frames. And I uh, also need to make sure that you had auto refresh turned on. Uh, that will make sure that uh, the animation plays in the viewport. But uh, though the animation is playing in the viewport, uh, we don't see it affecting the, inf uh, the scale of the particles here. So to have them animate uh, the scale of the particles, all you have to do is go under the texture and scroll down until you find images, uh, the image settings, and uh, hit this refresh button so that you can match uh, the keyframes of uh, the video, and then turn on auto refresh as well so that now the, the video is animated in the viewport, and you can see also that uh, our particles are animated. Now, I don't want to see the, the emitter, so I'm going to go to the uh, particle or object settings and uh, under instancing turn off viewport and the render so that I can only see the particles. Yeah, the hair, the hair particles look great, but uh, if you're not going for that, say if you want to have an actual object, I usually want to use a, another object. So say something like a cube and I uh, said that, let me turn on random colors so that I can easily see the, what's going on. So uh, then go to the particle system and use that cube you have just created or any other object you want to use as your render as object and uh, Select it as the instance, and uh, that should have your particles. You can see the animation already. Now, the effect is a bit set up, so to make it more pronounced, all you have to do is go under your particle ses settings and increase uh, the scale of the cubes or the particles and increase also your particle number. You can, see, you can already see that uh, we are able to see uh, the figures directly there. Let me bring this here. And you can see how the numbers are changing. And uh, if you added some good lighting here, you can make your scene look even much better. Uh, so let's set up quickly some materials here and uh, see what's to, what to do with this. So I'm just going to create a new material for this cube. And let me just go to these. And I want to use a texture, gradient texture. And uh, let me add some coordinate mapping, change this to um, spherical. And I just go to the top view, uh, sorry, for, to the front view. Just reposition this sphere to be in the center. And maybe scale it down just a bit. So something like that, and now we can use this to power the the emission color. 
I'm just going to have this change the colors bit here and uh, increase the strength or this to something like that maybe add in some reflections and uh, you can do quite a lot here just to get the effect so you see we still have some of these some of these small particles if you don't want to see them uh, you can go to the texture and the colors you can play with the contrast to get some to get rid of some of those particles but i think they look nicer with uh it looks nicer with those particles i'm just also going to turn bloom so that we see a bloom effect and maybe go to the world setting here and uh, change this to dark color so that i can see and if you really want to be fancy you can even add more subdivisions to this plane maybe even add a multi rays system yes subdivide this a few times and if we go now to the particle setting we can turn on advanced so that we can affect other distribution uh, so that we have an even distribution and I also select how many particles we want per face and the more subdivisions you have and we should go back to the particle settings and uh, make sure I turn on use modifier stack Yeah, you know, there is a lot you can do here. I just set one particle uh, per face and I just increase our subdivisions here. So you can see kind of effects we get. It's a bit slow now because we have a lot of subdivisions here. So we can reduce that. We can even play with the scale here. Yeah, so there is quite a lot you can do here. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.